hi again so today we are going to discuss another very important problem and that is related to the transients so in this transient we have this normally closed switch which opens at t equal to zero so what we have to do we have to find the differential equation approach to find the value of i of t for time greater than zero for this figure so this is figure 7.4 and we have to find the values here so again we are going to follow the same procedure which we have recently follow so first of all what we have to do we have to find the expression for time less than zero so when time is less than zero what is the setup here so this switch is now closed and this inductor will behave as a short circuit because it is now in a steady state and in steady state the short uh, the inductor will behave as a short circuit so here the circuit will be like this one the inductor will be short circuited here similarly here the switch is now closed this resistor and the voltage source here this one okay now the resistor here as well here the voltage source this is minus plus 6 volts this is the 3 kilo ohm this is the 2 kilo ohm this voltage source is the 12 volts source this is now the short circuit and this one here is basically the 2 kilo ohm okay so what we have to do we have to find the value of i of t which is flowing through here this short circuit okay so we can very easily see that when this branch is short circuited so which is actually in parallel with this 2 kilo ohm resistor so it will replace this 2 kilo ohm resistor with a short circuit as well because when the current will reach this point it will not follow the higher resistor but it will follow the uh, branch where the resistance is the least possible okay so this branch has the zero resistance so all the current will flow through it so uh, when the all the current will flow through it the equivalent circuit here will be like let me draw the equivalent circuit here this one the short circuit and similarly as the whole branch this one is in parallel with this branch as well so i can draw it like here as well okay so now this is the polarity here is this minus plus while the polarity here is this plus minus 12 volts 6 volts 3 kilo ohm 2 kilo ohm Okay, and the current here is this I of T. Okay, so we can very easily see that the current which is flowing through this one. So let me uh, consider the current through it like this one while the current through it is here. So let me call it I2 and let me call it I3. So in this branch, the current I2 is flowing towards the node here while the current here is flowing away from this node so what will happen here basically so here we can see very clearly that according to the kcl the value of i2 which is flowing to, towards the node is equal to the currents which are flowing away from the node so these are basically i2 and i3 it and i3 so i2 is flowing towards this branch while i3 and it are flowing away so from this we can very easily find the value of it so the value of i of t is equal to the i2 minus i3 okay so let me call it equation number one so this is my equation number one here and uh, what we have to do we have to find the value of i2 and i3 and i can very easily see that across this whole branch what is the value of voltage the value of the voltage here is basically zero because it is short circuited so considering this branch here and solving it then so uh, let me write here that 
applying the KVL across this branch first to find the value of I2. So let us have the I2. So now let me change the color. So for I of 2, what will color should be blue, not red. I will use the red for the other uh, solutions as well. So for I2, applying KVL, so according to the KVL, what will happen? The value 12 minus V2K should be equal to 0, okay? Or writing the values here, 12 minus what is the value of the current here? So, where current here is I2 multiplied by 2K, that is equal to 0. And rearranging it, I can very easily see that the value of I2 is 12 divided by 2K is equal to the 6 milliamps, okay. So, that is the value of I2. Similarly, I can very easily find the value of other quantities as well. So, finding the values of the other quantities. So, let me start here with I3. So, for I3, I can again very easily see that the value of I3, it can be calculated by finding the value of I3 here in this branch and for it, I have to apply the KVL across this branch as well. So, applying the KVL here, so let me apply the KVL here, what I will have, I have the 6, 6 minus 3K I3 is equal to 0. So, let me write it, okay. 6 minus I3 multiplied by 3K, this is equal to 0 and rearranging it, after rearranging it, I will get I3 is equal to the 6 divided by 3K. So, that would be 2 milliamps. Okay. So, that is basically the value of I3. Okay. So, after finding out all these values, all these values, I know that the value of I t here is basically according to the equation number 1 that is the I 2 minus I 3. So, putting these values here 6 milliamps minus 2 milliamps what I will get? I will get 4 milliamps. Okay. So, that is the value of I of t. Okay. And what is this for? This is for time less than 0. So, uh, in the transient state as the circuit will retain its properties, so it will also be retained for time equal to 0 as well. So, that is the equation of I of t and I of t is basically I of t is equal to the 4 milliamps. Okay. So, that is for the time less than 0. So, now uh, let us start analyzing our circuit for the time greater than 0. So, when the t is greater than 0, what will happen? This switch will come into the open condition and what will happen? All of this branch will be neglected because no current will flow through towards this branch and what will remain here will be like this, the inductor here, the resistor and the last voltage source. Okay. So, what is here? This is now the 6 milliamps, this is now 6 volts and the, yes, this is uh, now 3 kilo ohm, 3 kilo ohm and the resistance here is now 2 kilo ohm and this is for what? This is for time greater than 0. Okay. So, let us start analyzing it. So, in order to analyze it, we can very easily see that this is one node while this is the second node. So, I can very easily apply the nodal analysis here and after applying the nodal analysis, all the quantities which I have to find will be find out here. So, let me write different currents here. So, uh, if I 
call it the reference node. So, the first current which will flow will be this one. So, let me call it I1. The second current here will be this one. Let me call it I2 while the third current will be I3 which is flowing through this branch. Okay. So, now we have this circuit and I can also draw it like let me draw it with an easy method so i can also draw it like this one this one this one and the resistor here okay so this is now three kilo this is now plus minus and six volts this is the 6 milli henry sorry this is 6 milli henry not the ampere and this is here 2 kilo ok so now we have 3 currents which are this this and I3 is this one ok so, and the voltage here let me call this voltage as v of x so what i have to do i have to find the value of it here which is flowing through this branch so let us start analyzing it so in order to analyze it let me use the kcl here so when i will apply kcl what will happen according to the kcl i1 plus i2 plus i3 this should be equal to zero okay so that is the equation which basically illustrates the application of kcl here in this circuit so uh, let me write the values here what are the values of i1 so the value of i1 is basically the vx minus 0 divided by 2k that is the value of i1 similarly what is the value of i2 let me call it the current which i have to find out and that is i of t and uh, sorry I have I have to analyze it by using this one so that is basically I of t and similarly the third quantity here is this current and let me write it like V x minus minus plus 6 divided by 3 k and that is equal to 0 ok. So, uh, after multiplying both sides by 6k here in order to remove the values of 2k and 3k what I will get here I will get here 3 vx plus 6k i of t and then this last term so 2 multiplied by this overall term so what i will get here 2 vx plus 12 equal to 0 okay so that is the equation so now let me start solving it so when i will solve it let me write it 5 vx okay and uh, plus 6k i of t equal to minus minus 12 okay so that is the equation here and i can very easily see here that what is vx vx basically the value of the voltage across this inductor so here i can very easily see that the value of vx is basically vl and vl is always time dependent so let me replace it by this so what i will get i will get vl of t plus 6k i of t equal to minus 12 ok so uh, this is my equation let me let me simplify it some more so uh, dividing both sides by 5 what i will get here that will be vl of t plus 6 by 5 k i of t equal to minus 12 by 5 ok. Uh, similarly, I know the value of V L and uh, the value of V L of 
T is basically LDI of T divided by DT and uh, let me write here and the value of L is 6 milli. So, writing for L equal to 6 milli Henry, what I will have? I will have LDI of T divided by DT. So, 6 multiplied by 10 is power minus 3. So, DI of T divided by DT plus 6 by 5 into 10 is power 3 i of t equal to the minus 12 by 5 okay now dividing both sides by this 6 into 10 power minus 3 what i will get here i will get d i of t divided by dt plus <coughs> these terms will be here as well. So, 1 by 5 and this will be multiplied by 10 is power 6 i of t. Okay. And similarly, what about this term? This term will become as I am dividing both sides by this uh, term here. So, it would be minus 2 by 5 into 10 to the power 3. Okay. So, this is my equation and this is basically the first order non-homogeneous equation in which I have this forcing function as well. Okay. So, this is my equation and from here I can very easily find the value of i of t by using the conventional methods which I have earlier seen.